Hi, this is an Akai S5000 sampler and when I bought it, it retailed at £2,500. It's digital, but it's heavy and I'm going to take you through an app today that can do pretty much all of this can do and that app is only £4. Hey guys, it's JP, welcome to the channel. If you've never been here before and you want to learn all about music tech and looping, start now by clicking the subscribe button, hit that bell, and you won't miss anything. So today I'm gonna to be taking you through an app that's available on both iOS and Android. You can even get it for the Mac, and it's the ultimate sampling app called Koala. Koala is the ultimate pocket sampler where you can record anything with your mic instantly. Koala is an app that's been made by Elf Audio, and the idea behind it is so you can create samples instantly. The little slogan that they use is make tracks in a flash and there's no brake pedal. Cool and nice features of this is you can have 64 samples per session. You can resample the output of the app. You can trim, adjust and change the pan, add effects. You can also input your own audio files. Lots of different formats are supported. You can quantize the sample sequence and in the iOS app you can export this out into an Ableton Live set. You can transform your voice or anything you're sampling with the built-in eight input effects and also, there are 16 effects for the output. It's Ableton Link and Ableton Export compatible. It's Audio Buzz 3 compatible. There's loads of other features, including MIDI support. So today, I'm gonna to take you through a tutorial of how to get it up and running, get some samples in there, let's get them sequenced, and let's make a performance. So for today's example, I'm gonna be using the iPad, but you can use this on any iOS device, any Android device, and there's even a Mac version of this as well. So when you launch Koala, you're gonna see the Koala logo, of course, and then what it does is it shows you this page. This is the first page, which is the sample page. So have a look at the top, and we've got sample, sequence, perform, and then three lines. So sample is where we bring our samples in, either importing them, or we're gonna speak them, or if you're sampling something else. Sequence is where you're going to then sequence those samples and then perform is where you can start playing around with the sequencing and also add on effects. The three little lines is a menu so if we go into there there's a couple of different things where we can do things like importing, uh, the settings and even get a copy of Ableton Live Lite. On sample right in the middle you can see my voice bouncing up and down there where it says microphone. You've got headphones and you've got FX. Now these are the input effects so if I tap on here these are microphone effects that we can apply to the sample. So if I didn't tap any of these, I would just get a dry sample or you can actually add on effects. So we've got more bass, we've got more treble, fuzz, robot, reverb, octave up, octave down, and then bass synth. Bass synth is quite cool. It says there, press and hold a red pad to record. Now there's 16 pads on here right now. And right at the very bottom, you can see it says A, B, C, and D. So then we've got 64 pads per performance. Now before we get going, I'm gonna show you that you can actually import something as opposed to using the microphone. So where it says mic, if we just tap it, this is where we can record from the mic, resample from the app itself, or you can import a file. So if you've got files, whether you've got using things like audio share and you've got a load of samples or you've got samples just stored either inside your device or from a Mac, you can pull them in. So I'm gonna create a drum kit first of all. So I need a kick, a snare and a hi-hat. Let's sample them in. Now what I can do is I can go into editing each one of these if I want to. We've got volume, we've got pitch, we've got pan. So I'm gonna go into the kick drum and then I'm gonna click edit. This brings up a lovely user interface where you can basically pick if it's a one shot, a reverse or a loop. So I'm gonna hit one shot. So every time I tap it, it's gonna play the whole thing as opposed to when I let go, it stops. That's better for me for a kick drum. I can do the same with the snare. Because if I just tap it, it goes straight away. So we'll one-shot that as well. Cool. And then same with the hi-hat. Brilliant. Now, I can do things like reverse them. I can loop them. I can also go with the attack, the release. If I go into the attack, I can change that. I can change the release. And change the tone. 
The other thing as well, you've got choke off and you've got crop, so we can crop it all down. And you've also got normalize. This is really useful in a sense of making sure that the sounds are all the same level. So maybe you've recorded this here, but we've gone to someone else's house or we've gone outside and recorded something else and it's way louder than the other one. So we can actually change that and normalize it so it sounds level. Now the other thing you can do as well is get rid of them. So there's obviously a delete option there, or if you just hold your finger and just drag it, you can see that there's a bin there. I'm not gonna delete that, but I just wanted to show you it's a nice little animation. So what I'm gonna do now is record a bass sound. Now there's a couple of ways we could do this where you're doing harmonies or melodies or anything like that. We can just record one note and then play with that note. Or what we can do is we can record it in a sequence where we then just hold it down and it plays that sequence out. I'm gonna record this with one note and I'm also gonna use one of the effects. I'm gonna bring my voice an octave down. So we tap on effects, octave down, Ooh. So you can see it's affected the input straight away and I can't change that later. I've got a couple of sounds here, I'm gonna play them all. So we've got the kick drum. We've got the snare, we've got a hi-hat, we've got our bass sound, we've got me singing that without the effect, and then I've done a couple of harmonies, and I've made a whistle noise. I'm just going to add one or two more things. Now just before we go into sequence, I'm going to make a couple of little changes to the volume, the pan, just to get the sounds the way I want them. Now, if you want the same sound, but slightly different, you can copy it. And it's as simple as dragging the sample that you've made into a new space. Simple as that. So the next step is sequence. And when we tap that, it goes gray. We've got a record and a play. We've got a BPM with a metronome, which we can turn on and off. And we've got these eight bars at the top here, which we can then go further into 16, 24, and 32. These are the sequence phrases that you can then start recording into. Underneath that, we've got undo, clear, one bar, and then a piano roll, or the icon of a piano roll. So the first bit I wanna do is get a drum beat down or some kind of beat down. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure we've got the right beat. If I tap on it, we've got swing if we want to, we can make sure it's on quantize, which is really, really useful. I've now changed this to 85 beats per minute and I've got the metronome on. You can see a little line in between the sequence area here. If I hit play, and you can see underneath here we've got, it says two bars and we're ready to record. So I'm gonna record the hi-hat first. And you can see it's automatically quantized it. I actually double hit at one point and you now can't hear that because it's actually snapped it into the quantize, which is really nice. Whilst we're recording, let's get the beat down. Great, this area has gone blue, which means it's got something in it. And you can see the little steps there. All I need to do now to record something else is I can tap on that area, but that would mean I'd have to put the beats down all over again. So instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it. So if I grab the first one and drag it across, I can bin it, I can actually drag it to there. So we've now copied and pasted this over really simply. So the next phrase, I want to bring in the bass line. Now the thing with the bass line is I've only recorded myself going, oh. That's it, one note. And the great thing about sampling, you may have noticed the little keyboard. So if I tap the keyboard, it says choose a sample. So if I now choose the bass line, you can see this brings out a keyboard, but in like a pad environment. If you've ever used anything like Ableton Push, or if you've used something like Rolly Blocks, you'll be very familiar with this. The original sample is here in the red. And this is set to pentatonic at the moment, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to chromatic. So I've copied it over. 
in the third section so we can bring in the next one. To. So we've been able to take a lot of samples, we've sampled them in, and we can use the effects or we can import them and we can change the pitch or where they're up to. We've used the sequencer and we've actually started to record. We've used the BPM and we've been able to use the piano. We've been able to use the piano, we can change the scale and then what we can do is we can record one sequence and then copy and drag that into a new bar and then start adding or even you could start taking away. So I don't have to take stuff away. If I've built it in this manner, then I've got like this one, for example. And then after that, I've got this. If I want to go back, let's say I want to introduce something new. So I've got this part here. I'm going to drag this in over here. And then I'm going to start recording on this one and use the keyboard on the whistling. this is if you change from one sequence to another you don't hear any clicking any popping the audio is already playing through and it's really smooth the next part is perform so if we go from sequence to perform so for this example all our sequences are done i've got six sequences here and then what we've got is we've got a load of sounds so if you're on an ios device you may have noticed it says different fruit names on an ipad it actually has all of them all in one shot and what you can do is we've got loads of different sounds here that's got uh, clutter crush pitch comb dub all these different ones and hold at the bottom so if i drag my finger up and down it's the amount that's going in and then i can click hold i can add in some more if i wanted to and then when you take hold off, it goes away again. So I'm just gonna do a quick performance. Let's go to sequence number one. So a couple of extra things I want to show you here, and one of them is resampling through the app. So we can do resample. So let's just say I actually wanted to create a drum beat sample itself in time, and I want to use these samples to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my finger down on an empty space whilst playing one of the other ones. If I change this from mic to resample from app, hold it down. <laughs> And you can see now that sample is there. And I can do anything I want with it like we have done before. I could also change the effects so we could add in a bit of fuzz. And this has completely changed it. 
quite loud. The other bits I want to show you is the menu bar. So if we click on the menu bar, you can access this at any point. You've got new, load, save, save as, record song, resample loop, export. So if we go into export, you can actually export all the samples. You can export just the current loop. You can export all the loops, and then you can also share the song as well. You can export as an Ableton Live set, and then also get Ableton Live. So as well as that, you've got import audio, and you've also got import video. So you can grab the audio from a video you've made. Say someone said something really funny, went Bleh, and you could grab that and sample it into a song. You've got the settings, you've got help, and then again, you've got get live light. The bits that I really like about this is it's really simple. You just hold your finger down and then it intelligently knows roughly when you made that sample. You can even trim it and really dial into it if you want to, but you don't have to. You can just get going and make a load of quick samples and start making music straight away. The other thing as well as the user interface is really, really simple. And you've got these three bits, which is sample, sequence, and perform. I really like the piano part of it where you can literally just grab any sample and then start playing it melodically, which is really nice. Simple things like copy and paste is just dragging as opposed to trying to find it through a menu. And then loading up and saving is really simple as well. So we just go into there, we go save, save as, give it a name, or we can load and we can see a couple of different ones that I've done previously. So I've got the one here, which is video tutorial. This is the one we've got, we're playing with today. And let's just go for another one I did, which is this one straight away. So if you saw the video I popped up a couple of days ago, you would have noticed this tune. One really nice feature as well is when you move from one phrase to another. So this is only two bars long in this phrase, in this example. But if I was to go from this one over to this one straight away in the sequence, so it wouldn't play bar one again, it plays bar two. Let me show you what I mean. So this is playing right now. That's bar two. We're going to go around again. I'm going to pick something out. Instant. And it's really, really smooth. It's instant. I love it. I think that's fantastic. Coming from a looping background, there's many times when you've gone from one pattern to another pattern and it just starts again on par one, beat one. This is fluid and just moves from one sequence to another without interrupting which bar it's on. You can even start mixing this. So if you've got different samples of different bar lengths, then you can change what you're gonna be doing. So if I go to four bars on this one, I can change that. You can see it's now gone empty and go back, just go back to two bars straight away and it just time stretches it really, really well. If you found the content of this video useful, then please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me and helps the channel grow. If you want to support me a little bit more and you've liked a couple of my videos, maybe consider subscribing to the channel as well. Hit that bell and then you will know when the next video is out. You can also go a bit further and buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com. There is now a members section of buymeacoffee.com, which I have set up. So for those who really, really want to support the channel and maybe get your name on one of these videos, or if you want one of my t-shirts, for the membership, you can do so on buymeacoffee.com. All the links are in the description box below. Go and have a look at some of the perks. I hope you'll enjoy them. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.